Hi folks, it's Andy here from Bureau Magic. I'm going to just talk through the layout of the, the notes here that we're using in this advanced notation. Um, some people are calling it pitch notation, and it's to do with the, the actual sounds of the notes rather than the positions of them on the instrument. So this the other more basic style of notation is called position notation. A lot of beginners prefer to use that. It's a lot quicker to get into playing uh, and reading the the notation using that system but further down the line it's a disadvantage for you because this pitch notation that we are using totally opens up the instrument it helps us to see the relationships between the notes and uh, song structures improvisation note substitution makes conversation about the music a lot easier so I really encourage all of you to try and, and move over to it if anything um, it's going to be a little challenge for some of you. For me, I have to go back through all of my books and change every number in every bit of notation to, to go to this advanced system, this pitch system. Um, but the benefits totally outweigh the, the effort for you guys, and it's a bigger effort for me. So, yeah, I really encourage you to switch over to this pitch notation, and I'll just talk you through the, the note names right now. Ah, also, I'm not at home. Um, I don't have the same facilities right now, so I'm having to use my laptop here. You're on a sort of on a hinge. I'll I'll bend it down, and sometimes the the beer is going to be slightly out of shot, but I'll I'll try my best to get things right for you. Okay, cheers. So I, ho I hope you can hear me fine, and I hope this is in shot. The um, the notes, we're giving them names from one to seven, because it's a seven-note scale that we use. And the first note that you should look for is this, this one here. So on the treble register, this upper right-hand register or manual, we've got um, around ten, ten notes. Uh, the lowest one, you can forget that for now. We move to this next one and we're calling that number one and you can count up evenly two three four five six seven after we get to seven we get to the next round the next octave so we're calling this next one here one and then two if you've got extra notes it'd be three four and so on if you've got less you might be missing note two that's quite common um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. That's the, the easiest part. There's some switching around, some jumps between notes in the left hand side. And that's to do with um, the, the history of the instrument, how, how it's evolved. The, the first instruments that um, in the lineage of Mbira, I guess, had a, a layout that's kind of been inherited into into later instruments, so um, notes got inserted into little gaps, um, particularly these ones. That's the an awkward one, a pair of notes there. So our one here relates to this big one, played by the left hand thumb. Sorry, um, on the upper left register. That's a one, and this one also on the lower left, the bass register. So we've got ones here, here, and here, that, that relate to each other, they're, they're octaves of each other. Um, it, that just means that they sound similar to our ears. There's a couple of extra ones. Oops. But we'll, we'll Get onto those ones a little bit later. If you can find these ones, then you're beginning um, beginning to get a grasp of this system. So this one, this register is an easy one to um, find the note names. The lower register here, and a lot of forwards instruments. Sorry, in a lot of the videos that I'm sharing, a forward quenda. He's playing an instrument that has a a note two that goes in between these. It's an extra, extra key. Um, most of this style of mbira 
don't have that extra note in there. So we jump from one, miss two, to three, four, five, six, seven. So that's that's fairly steady there as well. One, we miss two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, we already knew that this was a note one, and that's the note that you'd kind of expect to find in between these here after our seven. One, miss a two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our one's up here, and then we've got a two over here. So one, miss two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our one is, next one is up here, and then here we have a two. Great. So we've looked at this upper right register, the lower left, and now we're onto this one. It's probably the most awkward one. Um, we know that this is a one. There isn't a two to come straight after it. And the, the three that we'd expect to be somewhere around here is actually, sorry, the, the two that's after that is down there. Yeah. One, two, and then the three that we'd expect to find around here is actually this note, three. So our first three notes of that octave are one, two, three. One, two, three. Our four is here, and we move backwards to the five. That little section there, those notes, are the, the most difficult ones to get your head around. So don't worry if this is, is messing with you right now. It will come in time. One, two, three, four, and then back to the five. And then from then on, we just count upwards. Six, seven, one, two. And you'll know that you've got the right note names for these ones because they match up with these two here. Ones and two. It's quite common for instruments to be missing this key. So we don't, you, you won't have a two there in some instances. So let's have a look. Upper right hand register. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two. And this one's a three. It fits in between some of these notes. Lower register, lower left. One, there's no two. Three, four, five, six, seven. The one is up here, and then two. And then a more difficult register. One, two's over here, three's over here. Four, and I jump backwards, five. And an even. Six, seven, one, two. Excellent. Um, have a little mess around trying to find the ones. Twos. Threes. Fours. Fives. Sixes. And sevens. Uh, try and make that fun, try and keep smiling. Um, if you can enjoy your efforts trying to get hold of those notes um, and find them, sorry my screen switched off there. If you can find those notes and try and make it fun for you to uh, play through them and um, get used to the sounds of them, then that's really gonna be reflected in your next exercises and your later playing. You're gonna sound um, more, you're going to be connecting your intention with the, the action and the sound that results. Um, so that's going to be closer to you being able to speak through the instrument. And if you're smiling and happy each time you approach the instrument, then everything that you play is going to have that sort of feeling. If you're struggling, um, frustrated, then it's not going to be as enjoyable a journey for you. You might be taking on too much at, at each instance. Um, also, in, in, that, in that instance, you're going to be practicing mistakes. You're going to be making things too difficult for yourself. 
So there's some really useful advice that I came across, and it said that there's a, a kind of like peak level for um, learning something new uh, about how challenging it should be for you. If you've got guaranteed success, then you're not really learning. If there's too much challenge, then you're going to be um, decreasing your rate of learning. Uh, so there's a sort of point in between ease and challenge. And this number someone came up with, 85%. If you've got an 85% chance of success at what you're doing, then you're going to be entering a peak state of learning. So try and aim for exercises, um, uh, activities that, that take you to around that 85% success rate. And then you're going to be maximising your learning, keeping your brain switched on, um, yeah, and applying yourself and absorbing as much as you can. Great. And keeping it fun. Cheers. I'll see you in the next video.